What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another day, another episode of 30NSG. On today's show, oh, we, we have a show today. My, my computer, my computer, I think, is on its last leg. Uh, those of you that are following me in, uh, in the Discord, uh, it took me almost 50 minutes, like 46 minutes for my computer to boot up this morning. It started acting up last night with the stream. We had to cancel the stream last, or not end the stream last night, and then it took me a really long time to get the computer back up and running to continue the stream last night for Helldivers. If you came out last night, I appreciate it very much. Uh, and then this morning, I was like, um, what's happening with uh, with my computer? So I started thinking about, all right, well, if I bring it to the shop, how long is it going to take? Do I buy another computer? It's like all, all this stuff going on, but that's none of your concern. Those are my concerns. On today's show, we're going to be talking about Xbox Wire has an article about Games Hubs now available for all PC players. So I'll give you the lowdown on what's going on with Xbox or with their update for the PC, uh, for the Xbox Hub. Uh, we're going to talk about EA has a raising prices for EA Play subscriptions. And we'll go into a bigger conversation of, you know, these subscription services, you know, make the problem, sell the solution. Yesterday, we talked about Ubisoft um, and how how they're pushing people towards the $18 a month. I've talked about this in the past with just Xbox itself, with Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. Well, EA is raising their prices, and we'll talk about that and what I think is going to happen uh, in the future. Uh, we're also going to cover, even though a lot of people are giving crap to Star Wars Outlaws for the character, the way she looks, I'm not having a conversation about that. We did that yesterday about it is happening in the industry and, and whatnot. But what we're going to talk about is uh, Game Informer actually had hands-on uh, hands with the actual game. And we're going to read their impressions uh, and kind of discuss what the game is. Because I want to know what what is the game. Yeah, we saw trailers of it. Yeah, we saw what it, what it looks like. But what do you actually do in Star Wars Outlaws? Um, and then we're also, if we have time, we'll talk about the Call of Duty has a microtransaction asking for players for $80, which is more than the actual game itself. So we'll talk about that as well, which is nothing new for Blizzard and Activision, right? $65 for for a mount, uh, $80 for a glove. You know, it's, it's all stuff. $80 for what? Well, you'll find out. You'll find out, Dolphin. Uh, so I appreciate it. If you like what we do here, we do this Monday through Thursday from 10 o'clock in the morning till noon Eastern. We go over news stories, have conversations. If you're watching this after the fact, I take some of these topics and move them up as a as an upload. Uh, you can watch just the topic that we talk about, but there's no banter back and forth. Uh, if you like these live shows, this is the banter back and forth with chat, and I do appreciate you. Yeah, a glove. That's right. Yeah, I'll give you a sneak peek. Are you ready? There it is. $80. $80 for that glove right there. If it makes you feel better, it's King Kong themed. It's King Kong theme. <clears throat> I we're, we're trying, Kylo, we're trying to figure out. Sarge, I, I, Argus was trying to help me last night, and Sarge was helping me out this morning. I think it might be my SSD. Because the computer turns on, right? It's on. Like, you hear it boot up and everything like that. But then nothing. My screen's nothing. Nothing nothing happens. And then it just sits there. And then I have to kind of like reboot it. Like reset from the computer. Or power down and power it back up. And around the third time I do it, all of a sudden, then all of a sudden it works. Um, but I think it's the SSD. The way it's... The way I'm looking up, Sarge sent me some stuff. It might be my SSD being corrupted or something. I don't know. The problem, The problem with this is... Because this is what I do, if I give my computer to a, a person to work on, I can't do this. And if I can't do this, then that's like you calling in sick at work. You know what I mean? So that's that's probably uh, not a good thing, right? <clears throat> I, I mean, the computer is eight years old, and the SSD is four of the eight because I had a regular hard drive in it uh, years ago, and it that got corrupted or whatever. Now I put the SSD in four years ago, around four years, and it could be going, so. It's definitely it's definitely something that I, I didn't want to, you know, deal with at this time. All right, let's go over. Let's go over. 
Yeah, no, every everything, uh, Paul, everything inside the computer seems like it's fine. Um, last night when when it um, last night when it went down because my computer was acting funny last night, right on stream when we were doing Hell Divers, it was like stuttering and stuff, which is never done. And I was like, oh, okay. And everyone's like, well, just reset your computer. I'm like, all right, cool. So I shut down my computer last night to reboot it. And then all of a sudden it was like, um, I can't get my computer to work. So I, I started unplugging the cables last night, making sure it wasn't the cables, make sure it wasn't the power supply, make sure it wasn't the circuit breaker, making sure it wasn't the, you know, I, I tried everything last night. This morning it did the exact same thing. It wouldn't turn on. And I was like, well, Okay, let's let's narrow it down some more now. So, I'm thinking it's the SSD. I think it's the SSD. Yeah, Hell Divers is on the SSD Eclipse. Yeah, it's my it's my main my my main hard drive. Uh, let's see. Reset is done on the motherboard itself. Sometimes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about that. I know about that. That's that's not the issue. Yeah, yeah. I I did that last night. Yep. I did this. I did this a couple of months ago as well when the power supply was going out. Right. So my computer case is eight years old. The motherboard itself is eight years old. Uh, the power supply, the graphic card, the the chips. The SSD is all not original, so I've I've meal pieced things together over the years. Um, I think I think it. Hopefully, it's just the SSD. If it's the SSD, awesome. Pain in the ass because now I have to move everything from the SSD to another drive, which is just another another shit fest there. But try deleting the shit on the SSD. Like take hell divers off. Is that what you think? You guys think it is. You could test the SSD. Paul, if you could um, hit me up in, in Discord so I don't do this over on, on stream and, uh, you know, walk me through it there, that'd be that'd be much, much better. I don't want I don't I don't want to take. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't want to take up the time of like the, the live stream for for tech support. Not saying it's hell divers, but it could be something. It could be because of all the editing and videos and stuff. But I have, I have other drives that are hooked up that take all my video storage. So I don't have a lot on except for games and stuff on the actual computer itself. Like I'll put it on the computer and then I'll move it over to the other drive. This weekend, I'm not doing a show with Lono tomorrow because I I have to do a field trip with um with my kids' school. They they called in the National Guard because um they were short on parents, so they had to call, they they called me up and they're like, well actually called my wife up. And my wife volunteered me as a as a chaperone tomorrow, so I get to go to a Ripley's Believe It or Not, and then Uno's Uno's Pizza tomorrow with my uh, with my kids' school, so I won't be doing a podcast tomorrow. And then the weekend I'll I'll start looking and and trying to clean up and and figure out what's going on with my computer. I, I do appreciate the help. What's going on, Cutler? Cutler, yesterday, yesterday, you were you were typing uh, random stuff in the chat. You okay? You okay today? You okay? Yeah, Uno's Pizza. That's Chicago, like chain, whatever it is for for pizza. Yes, you were typing random shit yesterday, or yes, you're okay today. <laughs> or yes to both. Just one silent word. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's the upside down house. Yeah, let me show you. This is what it looks like. It's not an upside down house, but it's um actually it is an upside down house, right? I don't know if it's an upside down house or if it's the crooked house, isn't it? No, it's just crooked. It's not upside down. Well, that's a terrible picture. Like, can we get a can we get a better picture than that? No one took a high quality picture, for God's sakes. Oh, there it is. It is upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's that's the place I'm going to. It's a cool little thing, you know. It's like a, it's a museum, interactive museum and stuff like that. We were supposed to talk on, on Lono's show tomorrow. We were supposed to talk about outlaws, but, you know. Creature's like, show, show on Friday. We're talking about outlaws. I was like, all right, cool. And then instantaneously as I typed, okay, cool, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I can't do the show. I was like, I'm a chaperone tomorrow. I got responsibilities. It doesn't look up to code. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It was, you know, actually it looks pretty good for a building that landed upside down. You know what I'm saying, Jones? So it's probably better up to code than some of the buildings that are built naturally. We have an upside down house with transformers outside. Really? Nice. Don't worry, 30. Lono will go on about Hell, Hellblade 2. Yeah, I, you know, I, I I feel for him. He, he, uh, big fan. I never played the first one, right? So I don't have the attachment to Hellblade 2, right? He really likes Hellblade 1. Hellblade 2, I heard him, I heard him yesterday say, uh, it's like a tech demo that you use for the Unreal Engine, right? I, I hope it's good. I think it's going to be short. It's going to be 30 frames per second. So, I mean, if, if he really loves it, he'll he'll push through and throw up as he's playing the game. Because that's dedication. That's dedication. Which one, Argus? I did not, Paul. I did not. I was going to last night. But uh, after we got off stream last night, I was trying to deal with my computer. Uh, and Or edit a little bit and deal with my computer. And then this morning, I was dealing with my computer. And I was going to watch the show, but I couldn't. So... Lono's popping off right now with Hellblade 2. Let's see, I'll, I'll watch it later. I don't know what he's talking about. All right, let's 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 go with the let's go with the uh, the first story today. Let's go with the first story today. <clears throat> Which one, L? All right, so the first story today is uh, Game Hubs is now available for all PC players. Okay, so Team Xbox continues to bring new ways to make Xbox better with players at the center and refines the experience to deliver a brand new feature based off the feedback this month. Update sees game hubs available for PC players with new navigation options are starting out to roll out on Xbox app on PC and also Xbox April update is rolling out soon as all, on all consoles. Now the PC game Xbox app on PC experience update, the game hubs are now available for all PC players. Back in February, they announced the team uh, that had started rolling out the hubs on PC players to connect even more with your favorite games. Today, we're excited to share all the new uh, PC players can now enjoy game hubs inside the Xbox app on PC. Navigate to any of your in-game library or in the sidebar to track on the progression, discover the latest content and add-ons to connect to compete with your friends and also get the latest news from developers. Now, with the official rollout, the game hub to all players on the Xbox app, we're also bringing back your fan favorite feature, game captures. Any game clip 
or screenshots you've captured through Game Bar for specific games will now be displayed in and respective game hub and locally stored on your PC. You can uh, browse your captures in the app and copy them to the clipboard for easy sharing and for quickly to jump in the file location. You can also learn more about that with the captures here. So they've done that. It says, we also just getting started with the in-game hubs and can't wait to share new improvements for future updates. The new update navigation and menu options for the Xbox app on PC are starting to roll out. Now we've we've uh, started previewing new sub navigation experiences under what's happening section of Game Pass tab and the Xbox app on PC with the subnet of players with all Xbox insiders to learn more about this and the changes that may be accessed to the Xbox app on PC. Okay, it says Xbox console experience updates. The Xbox April console update is starting to roll out. Starting today on Xbox April update will be rolling out on all consoles. If you're using Discord voice on your console, you'll now be able to hear soundboard audio from others of uh, from others in the channel or call. And if you don't want to hear the sounds, you can mute button or soundboard audio can be also found in the Discord voice options. I do like that they've integrated, like I think they've done it on PlayStation as well. I do like how they've made Discord on both Xbox and PC. It makes it a lot easier for someone that's playing with us that they don't have to like, like log into their, you know, computer to like talk to people now. They could just use the party chat on Xbox or PC, or you could just use Discord. I do like that a lot. Uh, do you have your favorite game moments in the game captures? If you're using the OneDrive to back up your game captures and clips, now when you upload a game capture, you also get notifications of your console, letting you know if you're running on low on space. Now also, they've added a new control on consoles, so you can also block whether the users on your device can install or uninstall games and apps, and you can also enable uh, restrictions with guest pin and disable new controls when a game or app is installed or uninstall happens. Your guests will be prompt for the guest pin to complete the activities and to view the adjustive new options, navigation, settings, systems, and access restrictions. So basically, they're making all these updates. And look, I'll, I'll, I'll have to be honest. The game app, Xbox game app or Xbox app, okay, is not the best, okay? But why are they making these changes? They're making these changes and doing stuff more on PC and making it the PC at least in my opinion, they're making this because they're trying to integrate all their stuff. Now, I still think they're they're going to take Battle.net and merge it with Xbox or they're taking an Xbox and they're going to merge it with Battle.net. It just makes sense. Why have all these different avenues that you're trying to... You want people to come into one spot, right? Um, now, obviously, if Battle.net it just stays what it is, but they just change the name instead of using the Xbox. Uh, but at, at some point, I think they're going to merge all this together, right? Steam coming to Xbox? It could. I mean, it could. Uh, I'm not saying it is. I mean, we read an article, was it last week or two weeks ago, talking about, like, Epic and Steam coming to Xbox. But Xbox is making these changes. And if you notice, they're leaning more towards PC. Even though they are still selling consoles, consoles are not going away. They're just selling less consoles. Or, you know, they're trying to establish more of a, a foundation between the gaming industry, between mobile, PC, console, cloud gaming, whatever it is, they're pushing it more towards the PC base. So I think these are little changes here and there with the Xbox app. They took away some features. Now they brought them back, meaning they've they spruced it up a little bit. They're they're making the Xbox where you can use Discord and it's been around for over a year now, I think, but they're making better features with that, as I just said, with the talking with people in Discord in through the Xbox. There is a little weirdness happening sometimes. Like if, um, for instance, if I, I use... Uh, uh, what is it? What's it called? Opera GX. That's what it's called. Opera GX. And you can just pull the Discord tab off to the side. If I go into voice chat into that, it kind of is funky because it doesn't recognize the microphone, even though it's in Discord, but it's through Discord through the app. But if I go through Discord itself, I can talk. But then if I go to Discord on the computer, it, it shows me, but it doesn't let me talk. It's really weird. So I have to watch what you're connecting to. Like if you have Discord open on your computer and Discord, you're trying to activate it over on your Xbox, it messes up sometimes. So I don't know if they're working out on that with those kinks, but overall, I do like that Discord is on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, phone, everywhere. It just makes it easier. It just makes it easier. Uh, so yeah, so that's the Xbox uh, Microsoft uh, Wire update. If you guys care or don't care, there's the information for you. Um... I want, I want microtransactions in game HUDs. You're going to get it, Ron. You're going to get it. If you, if, you, if you didn't see this screenshot right here. 
I mean, here can it won't it won't it won't let me make it bigger. But there it is. There it is. You got you got add-ons right here. Where where to go? Where to go? No, hold on. I I got I got to find it. Where the hell did it go? It was just There it is. You got your you got your Sea of Thieves Pirate Emporium. You got your microtransactions right on that dashboard right there. Paul says, telling you, this is just one more step for the PC app having full on Xbox access. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's a really good experience if you guys have a meta meta quest, okay, with the Game Pass app that they have on there. It's such a good experience, especially, I don't know if you live in a, I, I don't live in a small apartment. I have a house, but if you live in a small apartment or you go somewhere, maybe you don't have a, a big 65 inch television, whatever, whatever your circumstances are. If you just get this headset, right? If you have a MetaQuest 2 or 3, and I don't know if the other ones do it as well, but they have the app on there now where you play the games through, and it's it's an amazing experience because the, the giant movie theater screens in front of you and you're playing through your game. It's just, it's just fun. If you're a person that's playing multiplayer, maybe you don't want to go that route, but if, you, if you're playing in single-player games, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Also tells me that the next console will be running the version of Windows with this app. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree 100%, Paul. I think their next system not only will be cloud-based, but it, you'll also be playing PC games on their on their console. Whatever kind of technology they're using, I guarantee that's what it's going to be. Well, that means that Xbox app is useful now. Maybe. It all depends. It, you know, mileage may vary for, uh, for you. Mileage may vary. Uh, the Xbox app hasn't been bad in a long time. I would say like six months to a year, it's been pretty good. It's not the best, but I would say it's better than the Epic Game Launcher. Well, that's not saying much, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely better than the game uh, uh, Epic's Game Launcher. I need to get me a Starforged PC sponsorship so I can jump in the PC train. You know, I would love a Starforged. Actually, I'm affiliated with them, but I have a problem because they affiliated me but with my Twitch channel, well, I haven't been on Twitch, and I have to put something on my site. Well, there's no pins on the YouTube channel. So I've been trying to contact them, and they haven't gotten back to me. So if you happen to see this, Starforge, I'm trying to contact you because the affiliate program is if anyone buys certain things through my link, then I get, you know, I think it's like 5% or some shit, 2%, 5%. And as it builds up, then I, but I, I haven't put any of that stuff on my site because I can't. I can't. So, very interesting. All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah, it's Asma Gold. He owns he owns Starforge. Yeah, I reached out to a bunch of companies to try to get some sort of what I would really like to do. What I really would like to do, even though I'm a small channel, and I obviously no one wants to take a risk on me or give me the time of day because I'm a small channel. But because I do live shows every single day, because I do my podcast, because I do uploads, because I do all that stuff, I reached out to like Elgato. I have reached out to all these different companies like for microphones. I would sponsor these people for free listen to me for free just to give me equipment to use right like i would use their computer and i would for a year i'd be like i use starforge pc i use meta pc i use whatever i would post it up there the link would pop up and i would give them free advertisement now obviously i'm not reaching millions and millions of people but i can tell you one thing i'm fucking loyal okay and if you trust me right you don't have to give me a discount. You can even give me a loaner. I don't give a shit. Okay? You help me, I'll help you. That's the way it works. But they'll never do that, right? 
I gotta be a sponsor, be like, oh, this is my power drink. This is the, the The only sponsor I have is Good old glacier water. Glacier water straight from my well. Not glacier, but good old Florida water. Flows through you. I would 100%. Uh, if someone gave me a microphone to use, like me and Sarge, right? You give us two microphones. Uh, if it was, if it was Elgato or whatever, 100%. You don't snort G Fuel? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have G Fuel. I don't, I don't like any of that stuff. Just give me my, just give me my own water. I'm good. I reached out a long time ago when I had like 5,000 subscribers on Twitch. I reached out to um, a uh, a tea company, Joe's Teas. I don't know if you guys know, right? And uh, they wrote back to me and said, why should we sponsor you? I said, because I'm drinking your tea for free online. I talk about it all the time. And they said, we're not going to do it. I said, all right, cool. Then I'll stop drinking your tea. <laughs> that simple and I was just drinking it but then I got a kidney stone because I drank too much tea hence why water fuck your tea that's right I despise that dumb question for any situation. Why should we insert with dumb question? Yeah. Kidney stones, your worst fear? Um, it's death and then kidney stone. Just personal. Just personally. Putting stickers on cars increases horsepower. Maybe doing the same to the PC can help. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> like in interviews, why should we hire you? Because I've actually done this before. I've actually done this before. True story. Someone actually gave me that question. Why should we hire you? I said, because I'm not retarded and I'm a hard worker is what I said. Did I get the job? Yes or no? My wife told me that she hopes I get one. So I feel the pain of having a baby. And it's pretty... I, I can't say if it's pretty close. But passing a kidney stone, you're going to feel... You're going to feel, she'll laugh at you, but yeah, no, I, I, it, you're, it's definitely painful. I did. I did, Jones and Paul. I did get the job. And not only did I get the job, but one week later, they made me a manager. Depends on the year. Well, this wasn't last week, Bo, and, and, and for the last five, six years, I've been streaming, so... <laughs> And you know what? I would say the same thing. Why should we hire you? Well, I'm not retarded and I'm a hard worker. I bet it would still work. There's a good five people right now going... He just say retarded on and they do the Homer Simpson thing. They're like All right. The next story. The next story. EA raising prices for EA Play subscription. 
Okay, EA raising the prices of EA Play subscription. If you guys like what I do here, uh, please make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or hit the unlike button. I don't care. Just hit a just hit a button. Like, unlike, you know. And I really, I just want to say, I really do appreciate the one of you out there that comes by every single video and hits that down button. The dedication. I appreciate it. Okay. EA raising the price of EA Play subscription. Change will come into effect on May 10th. Annual fee rising to $39 while pro up to $119.99. Man, th I'll think about this for a second, right? $119, just $10 more than the newest game from Ubisoft Star Wars Outlaws. To get the season pass, three days early access, and the game itself is 109 you can get EA Play for the entire year for $119.99. All right, so Electric Arts has increased the price from EA Play subscription service. GameIndustry.biz understands. The standard uh, EA Play tier will increase from $4.99 or $3.99 per month to $5.99 with the annual fee rising to $29.99, uh, which was $19.99 to $39.99 or $35.99, all depending on where you are. Meanwhile, EA Play Pro subscription, which gives users extra in-game rewards and perks, as well as access to all the publisher's latest games that are broke, buggy, and unfinished, as soon as they launch is increased from $14.99 to $16.99, with the annual membership up to $119.99, which was $99.99. The email detail the changes is being issued to subscribe today explain that the new prices will come into effect May 10th, so hurry up, FOMO. Get in on the ground floor and make sure you buy as many years as possible ahead of time before we raise the price. GameIndustry.biz understands that these changes are being made to reflect the changes of currency or current, uh, currency valued and being bringing fees in line with the market value. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the market value, okay? Now, obviously... If I say my game, right, and we're, let's let's talk about Ubisoft. I know it's, it's an EA story, but let's talk about Ubisoft because the latest example, right? Because some people still, I don't understand why people are upset about these prices. They've been doing this for years. So let's let's talk about what's happening right now. They raised the price in video games to $70. They, just like the microtransaction stores say, this price was $25, but we're giving it to you for sale for $14.99. For this one time only. And you're like, oh my God, this skin that they've, digital skin that they've created, they put it on sale. I got it. I got to pick it up and buy it. Well, now they're raising the price of video games 70. And now there's articles reaching out there saying that they could raise the price to 80. Well, because they're raising the price to 70 and because they're raising the price to 80 and you're also buying a game for $110 now for the complete game that you get a year and a half from now. Okay, that value automatically raises the value of the subscription services, right? And this is why Ubisoft is pushing you towards the $18.99 or the $17.99 to $18 a month for their Ubisoft Plus. This is why EA Play is going, well, you're playing Madden, right? You're playing Madden, you're playing FC24, you're playing for these ultimate teams, you're giving all our games for you, we're giving you our games that are broke, buggy, unfinished. Take six months, eight months, 12 months, 18 months to fix these games like Battlefield 2042, and now we're not supporting anymore. But we're going to put that value of that game on our EA Play. And because we're giving you all this value of these broke, buggy, unfinished games that we're putting on this service, um, that we have to raise the price. Because we're just giving you such great value with all these great, broken, unbugged, you know, or not unbugged, bugged, unfinished games that we have to raise the price because the cost of these games is just too valuable and we can't give it to you for the $99. We have to raise it to the 120. And this is just where they keep pushing the envelope, right? Make the games high enough where you're like, I don't want to pay $70. I don't want to buy $80. I don't want to pay $110 for a video game. Oh, well, you know what? That, that, that streaming service looks really interesting at $17, $18. $20, right? $25. Where do they go? How far do we go? And how far down the line does it get to where these streaming services are not $25 anymore, but they're the price of an actual one video game? People would still do gymnastics and go, well, one game costs $60, and now we're getting $60 a month for these, these streaming services. It's still a value because they have 100 games on that platform. So just getting one month of $60 is still worth it. If you play two games a month, you, you already got your money's worth. 
whatever gymnastics you want to do, but this is exactly what's happening in the industry, right? Make the problem, sell the solution. Problem is, keep raising the price up of video games. Keep raising the price and telling you that the cost of games is going up because we have to do the latest, greatest graphics and unfinished games. We have to keep raising the thing to give you not 60 frames per second and raise the price of the games. We have to give you where you're not going to get the 4K, but you're still going to get the price hike because video games is just really expensive. So this is it. Make the problem, sell the solution. And then when the solution is where everyone's going, okay, everyone's moving over to EA Play or Game Pass or PlayStation Plus or Ubisoft Plus or Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever, that's when they go, okay, 80% of the market's over here now. Let's raise the price because it's just not worth it anymore. We, we got to keep juicing them. We just got to keep squeezing them out of the money that they have because, you know, the value over here is too great. But now we're booming the value over here, and it's just too great. And we can't keep this great value at a low price. we got to keep raising the price, even though millions and millions and more people are playing video games, and millions and millions and more people are getting their streaming services because we're forcing them there. We have to keep raising the price. And this is the major problem that I see coming in the future, where you're, you're not going to have a disk drive. You're not going to own your games. It's all going to be like a Steam. It's all going to be like a, a PlayStation Plus. It's all going to be like a Game Pass, where all the games are on the services. And you're not going to have a choice in any way, shape, or form to get a physical game anymore, okay? You have to go to, you know, uh, limited run games if they make it. If they do something, you get a disc now, but it's not really a disc. It's a, it's just a code that you put in, and then it, you have to download the game. Hence why Star Wars Outlaws is not going to be an actual physical copy, uh, even if you get the copy, right? Starfield did this, right? You, you put the thing in, but it's just a code that you download the game. And this is what, what happens, right? So, yeah, they're going to raise the price to $80. Yeah, they're going to raise the price to $110, which they've done. Right, just we're we're not in the future. It's now, right? Star Wars Outlaws cost one hundred ten dollars to get the complete game. So, this is what's happening. Make the problem, sell the solution, moving it over, and this is why EA is making the price go up from a uh, hundred dollars to a hundred twenty dollars. And they're like, oh, it's it's only one hundred twenty dollars. Not a big deal for for the entire month, right? But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think? Are you up for this? Are you like, hey, you know what? Screw it. I don't really care. I'm just going to get the subscription model. I'm going to play my game that's broke, buggy, unfinished. And I'm going to pay $120 a year because that's what they want me to do. Let me know your thoughts down below. Please leave a like, share, or subscribe. And if you like what we do here, please make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. All right, let's see. <clears throat> this is a safe space. Sure. Until it's not. Let's go on, water. Let's see. Argus says, I say that word almost every day. And my little brother has special needs. I'm never going to stop saying it. Uh, none use it in the way that it's dispar uh, disparaging to actual disabled people. Used for stupid. Yes, it's all about context. It's all about context. And plus, it is it really offensive if I'm calling myself? Do you know what I mean? Summer hike is fifty seven. That's just so random, Mo. Did is um is she in something that you're you're bringing her up, or did it come across your like Twitter feed? It's like her, it's her, it's her birthday. I like to play games with bugs. It has an immersion. Look at Helldivers 2. The bugs are literally everywhere. That's right. Those bugs I, I'll take all the time. Those, those bugs I'll take all the time. Gamers are already, uh, already own nothing, and they're happy. Yeah, they're like a pig in shit. Final Shape Collector's Edition is $300 with a code to the game. I read that. I read that out loud. Dolphin, I read that out loud, and my brain's processing it. And I have no reaction. Because I'm not, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised in the slightest. $300. When I open up that package for
for Destiny's final final shape collector's edition. Is there a device in there that blows me for three hundred dollars? It's only a safe space on Sundays. <laughs> it's not even offensive to me if you call someone else retarded. I came across my news feed wearing a blue swimsuit. Nice. They're trying to get the money to split from Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, can you imagine the day comes when Bungie's like, yeah, uh, Sony owns Destiny 3, but Bungie separates from Sony and they're making a new game. Want the worst part? I bought it. Oh, for God's sakes, Dolphin. Congratulations. I would rather pass a kidney stone. I know this because I've passed one. <laughs> Everyone's like, come on, dolphin. That that's true, Argus. They actually don't cost that much. I've I've seen them I've seen them on the internet in my feed on Twitter as you 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 click on a uh you know like a bunny rabbit like like playing with a dog and you're like oh let me see what people are saying about that whoa whoa okay yeah all right yeah three hundred to pay for a lore that isn't in the game well three hundred dollars so you can lose that in in three months. Congratulations, I'm retarded. <laughs> oh, man. That's good, Dolphin. Uh, so 120 just for one year of the content and 180 for a collector's item. Yeah. yeah. If we break this down, Quest, if, if we do the coffee analogy that people love doing, right? When you say it's like, it's only five dollars. Like it's only one cup of coffee. It's it's only twenty five cups of coffee, right? I mean, if you if you don't, you know, just stop drinking coffee for twenty five days, and you, you got it. You, you got it. It came with the original tower. What do you what do you what do you mean? It came with the original tower. Remember Resident Evil 6 Collector's Edition? That thing was 1300 What? $1,300 Resident Evil? What? I don't remember this. Premium edition, thirteen hundred dollars. What what did it come with? Did, what did it come with? Did it come with all games ever created by Resident Evil? Like, did you get all the games in Resident Evil? Like, did you get ownership in some stock or something? The company? Did you get a real doll with it? Like, what, what happens? $1,300. 
You get a D1 tower statue. Dolphin, I, I, I'll i be honest with you right now. I know you're being serious, but I can't tell. <laughs> I I can't, I can't tell. You get, a, you get a D1. Destiny. Destiny 2 final shape. What was it? Premium edition? Is it collector's edition? Oh, this is great. This is great. When we create a collector's edition, we try and recreate items from the universe for players to enjoy outside of the game. So this year we're doing a Destiny 1 tower. We really try to work hard at thinking about 10 years of Destiny. of destiny and how best to encapsulate that experience even as the game dev who've you know worked on it since day one like i think having it be the tower is super exciting for us because it's going to kind of catalog your journey of a player i have a question i i have a question this is not the final state of it is it This 3D printed thing is not the final, the final thing, is it? It's, it's not painted. It's, this is it. This right here. Th this, this is it. Yes. That's all it was, and my wife made fun of me. I mean, I'm with your wife. I'm with your wife on this one, and your wife doesn't even like me. Right? Look at this. Destiny has brought us together. Right? Maybe if I don't like it, maybe your wife will like it. Right? Maybe, that, maybe that'll be it. From when you first started playing Destiny all the way to now. The tower, it's kind of like the beacon in which you're, you're a place you can call home you get the tower. Bro. And then there are actual figures of... Actual figures. These are pawn pieces from a board game. <laughs> actual figures. All right, let, let, me, let me hear this out first. Let me hear this out first. The Vanguard mentors that accompany that architectural model and there's a lot of like hidden messages and hidden things. There's uh, gonna be some fun surprises. We're always trying to push the envelope. And so we've been playing a lot with magnetic locks and uh, sound effects, yeah. lights, just sort of make this experience as a whole yeah. um, really special. It's sort of the perfect symbol of Destiny. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> Me too. Can I see a side profile of that thing? I mean, this is, this is amazing. This is amazing. What, what does the back look like? Can I, can I see? This is, this is absolutely, I, I'm speechless. You see the reaction live. Like I'm speechless about this. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing what they can sell. I mean, they did sell candles and bath soaps back in the day for Destiny. And they did charge you $200 to force you <laughs> to do a raid within a certain amount of time. 
And if you completed the raid within a certain amount of time, you could pay them $200 for a jacket. This does not surprise me. There's no magnetic locks. It's plastic. I mean, there could be locks. Right, if you're a Warhammer or Gundam figure painter, you're going to have a blast with this. I just find it funny. And this is, this is just this. Destiny Final Shape Collector's Edition. No game code. No game code. $175. So, what? What's what's the game code one? <laughs> oh, this is on sale. best part is correct me if i'm if i'm wrong but didn't the tower blow up in the game right the old tower is gone right you're in a new tower When he doesn't get enough shit for how much the myotize things. Okay, so they blew up the old tower. And then they sell you the old tower. I mean, that's genius. I mean, I, it's genius. Right? They blew up the old tower. And because they know that the game's coming to an end. And people are like, man, I started with this game. That first Destiny 1 was so amazing. They are literally going back to the nostalgia of, they know you loved it so much that you would go buy a tower for $175 with no game. <clears throat> and it's part of the Final Shape campaign. There you go. They're like, how do we make money on this, this old tower? Genius. I kind of, I want to applaud them. I'm going to applaud them for literally selling the tower. Mandalorian says, 30, I have a question. How does EA play price increase affect Game Pass? It affects Game Pass in the long run because uh, it's just another streaming service, right? So think about think of it this way. Right now, it's not affecting Game Pass as a one to one, but because the industry is raising prices of video games, right? Because they're raising it to seventy or eighty, hundred, hundred and ten, selling you stuff for three hundred dollars, the value that they're raising up is the games cost more, so they have to raise the streaming services. Okay, and when one does it, the next one follows, so on and so forth. And EA Play alone. I don't know if it's going to raise the price of Game Pass yet, but EA Play is part of Game Pass. Okay? So now, if Game Pass really wanted to, they could be and say, because right now, right now, Game Pass is, what is it, 
for Game Pass, and you get EA Play, and you get a bunch of other stuff, right? PC, you get the, you get the PC, you get, you get EA Play, you get a bunch of stuff, right? Now that EA Play is raising their price, and EA Play is part of Game Pass, Game Pass could be like, well, we got to raise the price of the higher tier Ultimate because, well, EA Play is part of that, and EA Play is actually cheaper because now it would be cheaper to go get Game Pass than it would to get EA Play. You see what I'm saying? Just to get EA Play, you're paying the $18. But now, if you get on Game Pass, it's actually cheaper because you're getting Game Pass, PC Ultimate, and you're getting EA Play. I almost bought that as well. Uh, the no game part stopped me from track. And the game with the uh, Collector's Edition is uh, no thanks for me. How much is the... Where Where is the... Is it the Ultimate Edition? Like, what is the... I don't see it in the store for the version with the with the game that you paid $300. OJ died? What did he die from? Can we all just agree that this new DLC is just uh, reused content? New powers are just mixed and matched to the old ones, and the old tower uh, Kate is back, and there's something new in the DLC. Um, yeah, nostalgia. The new nostalgia of the old. They're selling the old to the new. Prostate cancer. How old is he? How old was OJ? Seventy-six. Seventy-six. Look up the Snow Day Collector's Edition. All right, I will. First of all, Snow Day Collector's Edition. Snow Day Collector's Edition is $219. Okay, $219. Do they show you what you get inside? Okay. So, Snow Day, you get the items that you get. Limited Collector's Edition includes 5-inch Grand Wizard Cartman. Okay, Snow Globe, Grand Wizard Cartman Talking Toilet Roll Holder, Grand Wizard Cartman Knit Beanie, Six Terra Cards, Soundtrack, and the In Game. It's also all new 3D co op game. Okay, at least you get the game. Okay, a Blizzard of Epic Proportions, experience a cooperative gameplay. This is all part of the game stuff. So you get, you know, is there is there video or something? Pictures? Let me see. Oh, yeah, here you go. You get You get this stuff right here. You get the game, you get the you get the six tarot cards, you get the beanie, you get the Grand Wizard Cartman talking toilet paper holder. I mean, now that's better than the tower, I have to admit. Toilet paper, toilet paper Cartman. I mean, that's pretty good. And then you get a snow globe. <laughs> I would 100% take the toilet bowl, uh, toilet paper holder over the tower. At least I know I'm getting my use out of the toilet paper holder. Now, if Desi... If I could buy... You know what? I'll, I'll just 3D print it myself. I'll 3D print the, to uh, the tower of Destiny and attach in my 3D print a toilet paper holder... That way, it can always wipe my ass with Destiny. Man, that would be good. I think I might do that. I think I might do that. I mean, the, the, the tower... 
the tower seems like a really a much better a much better holder than Cartman. And every time you pull a piece of toilet paper off, you would you would have um what what was the what's the guy's name? The PvP. What's that guy's name? Oh god, I forget his name now. I would have to, I would just have dialogue of him every time like a PvP. Shax, that's it. Yeah, you just, you just have his dialogue that he said during the PvP matches. You want to short with lots of views, build it, and show everyone how to wipe your ass with destiny. <laughs> I... I think I I literally might make a 3D printed version of it with the toilet paper holder on it. It would be good. Pull more paper. Throw more grenades. Let's see. 76. What's 76? If I don't remember correctly, I might have had to pre-order the game separately. Digital only $100. But with tax, it was 300 Look, I, I joke and kid. If you want to, if you want to buy a a tower or any collector's edition, by all means, go ahead. You buying something doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. It does make me have a good laugh, though. It does make me have a good laugh, and I do appreciate that. I mean, look, I, I got the ghost. I, I got the ghost. That's that's it. That's all I got. I wanted to. I wanted to like hollow this out, and then make it glow, but. I didn't want to fuck it up. That didn't cost... That didn't cost $175. I got that on sale. It was like... Seven bucks. Seven bucks. I sold my Destiny Collector's Edition when moving out of the house last year. Yeah, no shame. No shame. I mean, Dolphin literally set himself up. He's the one that said he bought it. And then complained about it. I thought it was a hundred dollar Alexa ghost. No, no. no I, it literally, when it first came out, I think these cost like twenty five bucks. I think that cost like twenty five dollars at Target when it first came out. Oh, did you guys see? Did you guys happen to see the video yesterday of Asma Gold talking about the Tomb Raider stuff? You guys see that? He said the almost the exact same stuff I said. Got the $300 for for an emblem. 
Todd got with a loot crate. Emblem code. I couldn't see the, the words, the goddamn heart on my screen. You know that emote, the emoji at the bottom of the corner? So I have my screen up. I can't, when people type and it's longer, it gets hidden behind the damn heart that you can't shut off. I hate it. I hate it. You can't, you can't get rid of it. Hey, speaking of gloves, this seems like a really good segue, right? OJ Simpson died. Did the glove fit? Um, Call of Duty players say that new King Kong glove that, that costs more than COD points than the game itself isn't worth buying. The segue, the segue is great, right? I mean, you couldn't have fit it any better. You couldn't fit it any better. All right, Call of Duty's new weapon that asks players to fork out an eye-watering $80 in COD points in order to unlock it. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, amazing. This week, Activision released a Beast Glove melee weapon as part of the Modern Warfare 3 Warzone tie-in with the new movie Godzilla X Kong and the new Empire. Uh, it also, it's Apes Kong's new weapon is a film that lets him unleash energy-powered punches. Amazing. $80 Godzilla slash Kong Beast Glove weapon is now available. Uh, you need to buy four separate $2,400 COD point bundles to unlock the glove in-game. This is called the Titan Collection, and the, and the Beast Glove is the exclusive reward for completing it. There's an achievement and a reward for spending money in the game. Bro. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> oh my god. Like there chat, you can't you can't be buying stuff like this. You you can't this is every time someone buys something like this in the game, it's just a fucking test. They're like, "Well, they bought the glove for 80. Let's see what else we can do." You can't you can't be buying stuff like this. You want to buy a tower? Physical physical item, cool. Do that, okay. Collector's edition, cool. But to spend eighty dollars in the game, meaning you have to buy other stuff, and when you buy other stuff, they're rewarding you with this stuff. As you expect, this weapon skin packs a punch, and it's also has a unique ins uh, inspect inspection animation. However, it does not let you equip the camos and does not have unique finisher, dis disappointing some fans. That would call that would be called pay to win. You can't put stuff on it. That's pay to win. Twenty four hundred uh, cod points cost twenty dollars, and you need ninety six hundred cod points in total to complete the Titan collection to obtain the glove. Of course, some players will have to save up on cod points from previous battle passes and charge from previous purchases. But the fact remains that if you want to play with the glove, you have to and have a little more no uh, cod points on your account. You face forking out a lot of money potentially more than Call of Duty Modern Warfare itself. I mean, I have to say, if you do this, by all means, what were we talking about earlier in the show? Okay, it's fair to say that players are disappointed in the glove, given the lacks that lacks a number of features the community had hoped it would include. I got the Beast Glove, so I don't have to uh, say Redditor Grimmel on Xbox. Holy fuck, it has not... It, Holy fuck, it wasn't not worth it. The only plus side are the counts as of, of Mastercraft Blueprint unique in spec and the, and the joy of punching enemies, but it doesn't do anything special. I mean, I think it does do something special. I think it does do something special. If I gave a shit and played Call of Duty and saw people running around, it would make me laugh my ass off. Just because every time I saw someone have that, I know that they paid $80 for that and it would make me fucking laugh and then cry because I was laughing so hard. Okay. As I thought it would least ragdoll enemies. It's, it's a, it's a corp, uh, a corpse launch them. Okay. And you also get the equip camos over it. If you were interested in the melee blueprint, save your money. It's not worth $80. Some players are now wondering if Activision is testing the waters with new type of cosmetics. That's not like wondering if they're testing the waters. If you're this dense 
and you don't think they're testing the waters, and this is a conspiracy, like you're like, I wonder if they're testing the waters. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> More of this type will be introduced in the future, of course, and there's some of these the new defending the glove, saying it should be considered a bonus and nothing more than those who complete the Titan collection. Activision makes hundreds of millions of dollars from Call of Duty microtransactions on top of the price of the games. While it ditched loot boxes uh, some time ago, the cosmetic bundles have been replaced with a spark of uh, a debate within the games community. Amazing. Amazing. You got four hours of campaign the shortest campaign ever in any Call of Duty, and you paid $80 for that game. $70 for that game? $70 for that game. And now people are spending $10 more for a glove. Bro. Bro. What are we doing? If anyone that buys this, if, if you buy this, by all means, go ahead and pay for whatever you want with your money. But at least in my channel, you have no right to bitch about how expensive games are, microtransactions, season passes, anything. Nothing. Right? Nothing. If you bought this glove and you come and go, well, this game is just too expensive. This is just shit. This is... I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. Because you are the problem. The reason these things are happening is because you are doing it. These are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Are you a moron? And if you purchase this to get the $80 glove from Call of Duty, please let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And if you like my other videos, please make sure you check them out. I am sorry. I'm sorry. This is this is this is this is worse than anything else. This is worse than the dollar was it two dollar two dollar dot that they were selling years ago. You have to spend eighty dollars to get a glove, and people are wondering if this is a test. Spend eighty dollars on a melee weapon, but people are upset that the game is costing seventy dollars. Make it make sense. I can't, Krabsy. I can't. I can't. We're, we live in an upside down world, okay? In an upside down world where I'm going to tomorrow. I'm going to an upside down building tomorrow. Maybe, maybe it'll make sense tomorrow when I get to the upside down building. You let these people spend their hard-earned money on these microtransactions, 30. Beast glove power. Whatever. Whatever. Just, if you buy it, cool. You just can't bitch about any of the pricing anymore. If you're one of those people that bitch about pricing and you and you, you paid for this, I don't want to hear it. Imagine spending $160 to dual-wield melee weapons. Remember the, the guy that talked about that COD could charge money to reload your weapon? Charge per bullet? Yeah, we're not far off from that. We're not off from that. Gotta make 70 billion back as quickly as possible. I wonder... This would make me laugh. I wonder if more people on PlayStation are buying this than people on other platforms. Because that, that would... <laughs> that would make me laugh my ass off so bad. Like, can you imagine the people that hate Microsoft so bad, but now they're playing COD and they're paying $80 for a glove? Oh my God, it writes itself. It writes itself. L says I would pay $80 for an OJ Simpson trial. I mean, that would sell. That would sell. 
My son's obsessed with the King Kong. Good thing he's not allowed to play this. But what if they like King Kong that much? I mean, that's fine, Jason. All I'm saying is if you buy it, you can't bitch about the price of anything. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Water, the best part about that, are you a moron? Please let me know in the chat down below. If people write in there, if they, 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 they've kind of already done it, right? If they defend it in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> it's definitely worse than the, than the D1 Tower, Dolphin. An angry Handy J from a Sketchy Street Hooker <laughs> would be better investment than the $80 digital glove. Oh my god. You know what I just thought of? As soon as you said that, Argus, I was thinking of Rockstar Games that yet if you want a hand job inside of Grand Theft Auto 6, that you have to spend enough money in the game so that the hooker would give you a hand job in the car. You know what I'm talking about? As soon as you wrote that, it just popped in my head. They will charge, they will charge someone a microtransaction in the game, and people will be like, Did you see this? So cool. It only happens when you spend eighty dollars in game currency, and then the hooker gives you a hand job. Like of of what Did you just say you spent eighty dollars to get a digital hand job for your character in the game? Amazing. The, the world, the world. There's a local radio station up here and uh, it's such and such in the morning. Uh, but their slogan is um, with the world gone crazy, right? It's something, something in the morning with the world, with, with, with the world gone crazy. amazing uh, you, the people that don't care about the $80 glove that they're using such a deal such a deal but then those same people will bitch that we're paying $70 for video games this is outrageous this is outrageous $80 glove well, that sounds good I would buy Star Wars Outlaws with $80 you, you can, but only for the first half of the game. Quest, $80 only gets you the first half of the game. You got to pay $110 to get the complete game. Can you show the glove? Sure. Yeah. It's definitely worth, uh, let me show you the glove. I mean, it'll be cheaper. It's definitely cheaper me showing you the glove than you getting it in game. There it is. Look at it. In all its glory. It's the Titan Collection Reward. Purchase all bundles from this collection to unlock. I'll give him 18, final offer. <laughs> For the glove? Or are you talking about Outlaws? See, the problem, the problem though, Eclipse, is... Look, I, I hope Outlaws... We're about to talk about Outlaws. I hope Outlaws is a fantastic game. I do. I hope it's a fantastic game. But they get you, right? Because if you give them $18, you give them $18 when the game comes out. Okay? $18 when the game comes out, you're going to be spending at least... Right? You're going to be spending at least triple that because you're going to come back for the first season that they release and then the second season they release. And we don't know how many seasons they're releasing. Okay, So you're, you're coming back at least three times. At least. Which is 
six bucks less than what a game used to cost at sixty dollars for just three months of that right for just three months you're spending six dollars less what a game used to cost so now you're in sixty dollars so you're like well i might as well pay an additional sixteen dollars to just get the standard edition but the problem is if you just wait just wait for all the seasons to come out so Instead of coming out now in August, you buy it August of 2025 and you'll have all the seasons in the game and you'll pay less than the $40 price tag and you'll get everything in the game at 40 bucks. Just one year later. No, Outlaws is not a looter. It's a it's a action adventure open world game. Aren't they putting Cheech and Chong in the in COD? I think they already did, didn't they? But they only got you if you come back, though. Sure. Or you can do the 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 gy mental gymnastics, salty, right? Be like, well, I already got eighteen in it, and it was a fun game. I had fun. I got my money's worth for eighteen dollars, right? So then you're like, ah, I'll pay for another month. If if you're gonna go the the Ubisoft route, Ubisoft Plus route, Ubisoft Plus Premium route, by the way, eighteen dollars. <throat> I think, obviously, I would wait for reviews to come out. I wouldn't even get the, if if I was you, to get the best value for your money, I would wait just one week, let reviews come out, let people play it, and then go, eh, I'll wait. And then if the seasons come out, then you pay $18 and you have the entire game in there for $18 instead of coming back. Yeah, Outlaws is a single player game. I personally like to buy the deluxe uh, version of the game, but when I saw Outlaw's price, it stings. And I made a video about that, and I put it up yesterday. Okay, I was really excited, still excited about the game. We're about to read an article about hands-on impression of the game. Okay, I really did look forward to this game. This was my most anticipated game this year, and I'm gonna get it. But I'm 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 paying the eighteen dollars, right? I'm paying the eighteen dollars. Uh, I'm not buying the game because I refuse to pay. $110 for the, the complete game. And I have to wait, right? And I made a point in a short yesterday about people paid $120, $125 for Redfall for a season pass and new characters and stuff like that. It's been it's been one year and they still haven't gotten their their season pass, right? They paid money up front. They paid double the price basically almost for the whole entire game. And they have yet to actually get their content that they paid for, okay? What's to stop any other game to do that? where you pay up front and then you don't receive the, the thing until later, right? And if it doesn't sell, if it doesn't sell well, then they, they just stop supporting it. And it's, it's your fault, not their fault for overpricing and stuff. I'm so confused. How does a single player game have seasons? I mean, it's not the first. Didn't Valheim, well, not Valheim, Valhalla have seasons as well? In Assassin's Creed, didn't they do that? Outlaws is a single player game with future DLC already planned. I'm so confused. How does a single player game have seasons? I already read that. You get the better version of Outlaws with the Ubisoft Plus Premium. Season Pass used to cover expansion passes, DLC, and single-player games. Here's the thing, though. What about if the what about if the game is not complete yet? I'm not saying it is. I have no proof. But what if Outlaws DLC that they've now charging for is not complete yet? Right, and based on how many sales they have if they make it or not. I don't think that's the way it works. I think it's already done. But wouldn't that be a kicker? Makes you wonder if Redfall... Makes you wonder if Redfall had the stuff done beforehand. Probably not.
Yeah, Ubisoft has been doing this for years. But the difference, though, now is that it's even more expensive. Sure. And I, and I think that's exactly right, Salty. Um, don't be confused. This is the content that's cut from the game to milk you more. Yeah. It's, it's, to, it's to hype you up and go, oh, well, I like Star Wars. Open world. That sounds good. Right? Like, I'll be honest with you. If, if games before them didn't burn me, and this was my first rodeo, I would look at this and go, oh, man, I'm getting this. They're going to come support it. I'm going to love it. And I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm skewed, right? I know I'm, I'm, you know, I don't trust companies anymore. I, I understand this. Okay. We're going to read, we're going to read the hands-on preview to give you a little bit more information of what Outlaws is, right? Because I don't, I don't want to go just one side of giving shit. Like I'm not giving the game shit in any way, shape or form. I just don't like the, what the company's doing in their price structure for the game. Okay. I'm still excited for the game. I still want the game to be good. Okay, but for what I saw, for what they're asking, I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. If they already have the DLC planned out, viable before the game even launches, it's really just part of the base game. It should have been there. Right. And this is the problem going way, way back when, 10 years ago with Destiny 1, when they first announced Destiny 1, it was coming out, okay, in September. And just as they released the date, for, uh, for Destiny 1, they also were selling the two expansions that were coming out later in the year. So you were paying $100, or actually it was um, it was $90, I believe. It was $90 because it was $15 a piece if you bought Dark Below and House of Wolves along with the $60 purchase of, uh, of Destiny, right? It was $90. But if you bought them separately... Dark Below was 20 bucks, House of Wolves was $20. So then you were paying $100 for that. So if you didn't want to pay it... But the problem with that is when someone bought Destiny, we went into Destiny and we're like, oh, we really like Destiny. And then someone went in, they glitched in and they weren't into the world of where the Dark Below was. They got into the room where the Dark Below was. Okay. And people are like, oh, they just locked it off. No, Nobody spawned. Like There was no bad guys in there, but the world was there. The dark below was down there. You could walk in there and walk around and they're like, oh no, we didn't, we didn't hide it. People are like, no, no, they didn't do that. That's just, look, there's no, there's no enemies there. Yeah, because you have to pay for it. They locked it off so they could charge you an additional $15 for that game, for that expansion or $20 for that expansion. That's what this feels like. It feels like that the game, they could have put it in the game from the start. But they decided, ah, you know what? It's an expensive game. We gotta, we gotta pay our bills. We gotta keep the lights on. Let's try to milk them as much as possible. Not only did we raise the price ten dollars, so now the game's seventy dollars. But now we're raising it, uh, the DLC, and we're giving that value because of three days early access, and we're giving the season pass. So the season pass doesn't mean shit to me because I don't even know if that's coming out. They can go bankrupt before that time, and 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 the game shuts down, and you get, you don't get that shit. Right? That's an obligation now because they got the money up front. Right? It's like a friend. You, you loan money and every day he kind of looks at you differently because he's he knows he owes you money. You're like, you have my money today? And you're like, nah, sorry. Yeah, you gave them the content up front, right? Or gave the money up front, but you get no content. Right? You get the base content, but you have to wait for the other content. That's what's shitty about it. Is this the Game Informer? Uh, yeah, this is Game Informer. Yeah. I think it's more selling people on the promise of things that come into asking than the lock in by paying it for it. Altern says, I will not be surprised if one part of the story uh, feels incomplete, like a secondary character, and they also just tell you enough his story. Yeah, where it almost feels incomplete, sort of like Suicide Squad, right? At the end of the story of Suicide Squad, you know there's a free content coming with story content, and you're not paying for it, but there's no story. This... You know it's going to end, and you're like, oh, man, I can't wait for that second part of the story. <laughs> 2010 DLC arguments are resurfacing. I love it. 
I think the milking it becoming with Ubi, uh, Ubi's titles after each title underperforms, and they got pay others like, uh, say, Singapore. Look, in, in my video yesterday, you guys watched the live version of it. Now, when I edited it, I put in some stuff. Here, look. Let, let, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to. When, when did the Skull and Bones come out? Skull and Bones has been out for what? Two months? Came out after Suicide Squad, did it not? Right? You can literally go buy a used copy for $60 less. Okay? You get the Steelbook collection, right? For, for $20 less. $25. Right? You get the Xbox version of it for 40 bucks. There's no reason to buy these games. Right? We're not talking about like a year later. We're talking two months later. You can go pick up a used copy of this. And this is why companies don't want to have physical copies of games. They want digital copies of the games because... If they have a digital copy, they can keep that price as long as they want, right? And this is why Ubisoft wants you that digital copy. This is why they want you to go to to Ubisoft Plus because they can keep they can control the price for longer because these things are not selling. Avatar, same thing. When did Avatar come out? November? Look, $37 right now for a used copy. I think the only game I've seen that keeps its price recently is Boulder's Gate 3. It's been on sale. It's only like $9 off. It's got value. Give me a second. I got something in my... Got it. Got it. All right. As much as I want to play Outlaws, I ain't, I ain't paint uh, $179 to get the bonus stuff. I'll pay $20 and playing it all on Ubisoft Plus like I did for Avatar. Right. And this is this is our conversation before talking about EA EA Play moving up its price, right? All these companies are going to start raising the prices of that because they know that more people, right, are going to move towards the Ubisoft Plus. Okay? And because you're moving it all towards Ubisoft Plus, they're going to make more games like Outlaws, where it's a single player, multiplayer, doesn't matter. That's going to have constant DLC coming in, season passes coming in, because they all want to try to make the money that Battlefield, or I'm sorry, not Battlefield, Fortnite's making, Call of Duty's making, all these other games, Minecraft, Roadblocks. You just saw the article a couple weeks, uh, last week, right? Talking about how no matter what game comes out, they're all competing with these six games in the top spot because that's what's making money for them, right? So Ubisoft's going to throw out there Single player, multiplayer, doesn't matter. DLC, season passes, microtransactions, and see what game is going to keep that people coming back. And that's exactly why they're doing it. <clears throat> that's exactly right, Argus. Right? Raise the price of games. 
push you towards the subscription service and then raise the price of a subscription service and have content come out every quarter. Now, I don't know if they're doing the outlaws every quarter, every other quarter, whatever it is, but to keep coming back. This is why Game Pass works. I know you guys don't think it's working and people that are, their clouded judgment, right? They're like the Jedi warriors. They're clouded by the, by the, by the darkness of the Sith, okay? Game Pass makes money. It's not about just the people paying the $18 a month, okay, to come and play PC Ultimate, right? They're coming back and getting the, the content, new content that comes in for Sea of Thieves that comes back. It's free to play, but there's more skins for people to buy. Forza Horizon, free content they add. They added DLC last time, which was the uh, the off-road stuff for like 20 bucks, $30, whatever it was. And then they have you come back for the skins for different cars and different stuff, right? Same thing goes for all the other stuff. They all have a little online component, season pass component, microtransaction store component, because that's where they make the money in. People are so, they're standing in front of the tree going, I don't see the forest, but the forest is, just, just do this. Oh, that's what they're doing. What about making Diablo 4 better so people come back? Hope they play more and land in the uh, the shop eventually. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And and if I can get you in because you are an RPG fan, we have Diablo. And if you're an open world fan, we have Pal World. And if you're an MMO fan, we have Elder Scrolls Online. And if you're a car fan, we have Forza, right? They have all of these things into the shop. So... People come back, right? They have Fallout 76. It's a, it's a good game now. It's a good game now, okay? Forza, great game. You got Halo. You got Grounded. You got Sea of Thieves. You got, you got all of these different types of open world games that constantly update and upgrade. And they just keep adding more content to it to make you come back. I know all these things work. I'm just smarter with my money. 100% salty. I, I'm with you. But there's a lot of people that don't think about it. Hence why Vegas makes you turn in your chips or turn in your money for chips. They're colorful. They're playful. They don't really feel like it's real money you're spending. You're like, eh, I'll do another five. I'll do another, right? And that's what it's turning into. Argo says it's a genius plan and definitely long term. These companies are uh, are molding uh, the future to how they want it to be for uh, for all for all of us. Yeah, that's exactly right. For everyone that wants us to sign up to just play for a month, ten others forget and just keep paying. That's exactly right. How many people sign up for a, a subscription service? Right. You know how many people are still in debt to Columbia House? Those of you old enough to know <laughs> what Columbia House is. Okay, if you don't know what Columbia's ho Columbia House is, do some research. Okay. That's right, Salty. Right? They don't have to go for us. They know we're... We're smart with our money, but other people that are brand new, that are brainwashed by stuff, don't, don't. Ron, Ron says, I still owe Blockbuster video money. You can turn it in. There's a there's a place in Alaska. Yeah, there, if you're an Xbox, if you're an Xbox uh, subscriber right now, like for Game Pass, one of the perks is a YouTube premium for like three months, I think it is, right? I got this years ago. I tried it out for three months. At the end of the three months, because I had no ads, I was like, totally worth it. Now they raised the price. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he says, I still haven't figured out the 10th CD from the, from the lame list they had. Borderlands gonna be like Fortnite, Battle Pass, and skins to buy new heroes. You think so, B? Like, you think Borderlands 4 is gonna be like that? Uh, 
Crappy says the only Columbia I know is the movies and music. Yeah, they don't know that it was the music. Yeah. I can't wait for games to reach that $90 base model mark and they'll still be complete of full microtransactions. Oh, yeah. For sure. Do, do we think it's going to go backwards? Do we really think it's going to go backwards? You could go up and keep raising the price. It's never coming back down. These are not gas prices. Okay. Games, the only way the games can reset and start over is if and when there is a game crash, it backs down, and you better be sure that you know that they'll come back real fast and be like, oh, no, we're it's $60 again, but, you know, and then prices will rise, and then they'll do it, right? They're 100%. They, there's no way going back. They put all their eggs in the basket to tell you Okay, that games are expensive than ever before. And then there's games like Helldivers. And then there's games like Power World. And then there's games like Among Us. And then there's games like Fall Guys that didn't cost this much money, right? Agreed, Jones. I watch so much YouTube. It's 100%. It's worth more to me than actually buying subscription service or anything else. I was talking about this with a guy at work yesterday. At this point, I feel very lucky games haven't increased with inflation. $90 games better be worth it. That's the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, someone just bought a $80 glove for Call of Duty. Water says, what's funny though, 30, is games have always been expensive. Remember those days in the cartridges were like $60, $70 back in the day? Yes, but those are outliers, Water. Did all did all games? I remember paying $70 for the Zelda Gold Cartridge Edition inside the N64. Okay. Did all Zeldas cost $70 after that? No. No. Right? I think it was Yara's Revenge. I, I say it all the time. My mom paid $80, $70, $74, $80, I forget what it is, in 1984 for Yara's Revenge on the Atari 2600. Okay. Game Pass is great value for gamers? Sure. And we've had this conversation too, Ron. When does it stop being a good value? Right? Right? When? Did, how much money are you willing to spend on a streaming service? If it's games or Netflix or what is that? What does that cross the line of? No, I'm not going to do it anymore. Right? I said I would go up to at least 25 and that's it. 20, I feel comfortable. 25 is pushing it. Right? Neo Geo games cost $200 in the 90s. Hope they uh, say the base price of the games should go up, meaning getting the same quality of games you were used to, and they're saying that the companies just deserve more uh, of your money for it. Right, which they're also setting the setting the standard, right? As long as it looks pretty, they feel that they could charge more. But really, people just want good gameplay. Graphics don't really matter. You know why we uh, continue to go up? Because you still have the best value for your buck, unfortunately. No, they keep going up because it's not about value. It's because about it's more about people being stupid with their money. They know they're like, hey, look, look at what what Outlaws just did, right? Suicide Squad just a couple of months before that came out charged thirty dollars for three day early access. Thirty dollars for three days early access, and all the content's free because that's what they said, right? But th 3D Early Access was $30. Ubisoft just raised that $10 just like that. Just like that. $10 more. They're like, oh, they paid $30. Are they going to pay $40? And then the next person goes, well, they paid $40. Will they pay $50 for four days early access? Will they pay $50 for five days early access? Okay. 
and they look at this and go, we can make more money in the first week if we give them the date on the on the Friday and then release it on a Monday, we can make almost the same price for that video game in five days than we do for the entire thing. They could say seventy dollars. You pay us one game a month. I'll give you four hundred. So is Suicide Squad the new Marvel's Avengers yet? Yeah, it's pretty much there. It's pretty much there, Stealth. They know people are stupid enough to give them more money, and they'll keep pushing it until they meet the meet the line where the majority won't buy anymore. Right? Because think about this, right? They can't keep raising the base price because if they go up, they can never come back down, right? They can if they go up, they can never come back down. But if they keep the the video games at seventy dollars and then give all of this other bonus stuff over here, they can keep raising the price because a video game now is not it hasn't been it hasn't been sixty dollars for years. Okay, ten years ago, Destiny charged ninety dollars for the first game. They broke it up, but they charged you ninety dollars for the first game. For that first year, one year, $90 for that content for that year, okay? And they've just gone up from there, right? They've just gone up from there. Now it's $60 and a whole bunch of stuff, but now it's $70 and a whole bunch of stuff. Now it's the, here's the release date, but three days early access, it's $10 extra each day, right? It's $10 extra day that it's early. They're like, oh, well, then we have microtransactions, then we have a battle pass, and then we have a season pass, and then we have a microtransaction store, Right? So they have all these other things to keep raising the price of the video game, the base game video game, right? Collector's Edition, Premium Edition, Steelbook Edition. That's been there. But now they're it's the early access. Right? It's the early access. It's the it's it's this, it's that. They got 15 different ways to make money from you now, but the game's gonna stay at $70. But really, Outlaws is 110. Which is twenty dollars more than ten years ago, which Desi for one year was ninety. Is Foam Stars dead yet? I don't know. I've never, I haven't heard anything about Foam Stars. Nothing. Yeah, look at the price ultimate digi uh, digital edition of gamers. Used $100 on the average. On the new average, is $129 for the game. as less offering, and there's a bunch of useless digital items. Right. That's another thing. At least you got pins. You know what? Say what you want about Marvel's Avengers, but when Sarge bought Marvel's Avengers at GameStop, he got pins with it. <laughs> right? He got pins. Not digital pins, not digital stickers, not digital art book. Physical pins. Gaming is going to become a rich person's pastime in a few years if it keeps going this route. Gaming is already a luxury good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it. I said that yesterday in my in my video as well, right? It's it's a hobby. It's a it's a hobby. I bought Marvel's Avengers uh, last year for super cheap. Yeah, and you got all the skins with it, right? With all the skins. An article from yesterday says that Foam Stars lost ninety five percent of the player base, so it's not doing well. It's a live service, so uh, don't compare to Starfield or whatever. But wasn't Foam Stars free? Didn't they give it free for everybody? Now that's bad. Right? Not only did they give it for free for the first month. Right? I wonder how many people got to play it for free on PlayStation Plus and then didn't cancel their PlayStation Plus and, they, and, they, and they're still on it. Having those three have more different editions of the games are exactly the argument for why they don't need to raise the base price of the games from $60. They always make way more money doing the current. That's And that's exactly right. Everyone's always complaining, why did you raise the price from $60? They're like, well, and remember this, Argus, it's all digital now. It's all digital now. Just so they stop the people buying the physical, playing the game, being done with it, selling it to GameStop, and then someone else picking up that game from GameStop and then playing it. They miss out on that money. 
They miss out on that money. Now they're going for the FOMO Digital up front. Three-day early access because you see someone playing it on stream or you see someone playing it on there. People are like, oh, man, I got to get that. It looks really good. Instead of just waiting to see how it is. It's now, 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 now. Wait till it's fully digital. It goes to cost more, hundreds of dollars of the internet, and you also have to pay for the services, and you also be uh, tired speeds. I'm telling you, it's going to go that way. That's exactly what they want. PSA, Fallout 76, Xbox, and PC is free on Prime Gaming. If you play, if you play any online game, you need PlayStation Plus. So it's not that many people will cancel because of Foam Stars. No, no, but what I'm saying, Krebsy, is how how many people got signed up for Foam Stars and now stayed there afterwards is what I'm saying, right? Like, oh, Foam Stars. And they stayed there and they're like, ah, hey, you know what? I, I kind of like this. And they, and they stay. I wonder how many people they picked up from Foam Stars. GameStop should change their name to Stop Gaming. <laughs> That's what I would do. If I was the, if I was the owner of GameStop, I'd be like, you know what we're doing? We're going to switch the words around. It's now called Stop Gaming. Uh, and there's no game-related stuff here. People say inflation is why they deserve $70. Do people realize how refined the game is making process of equipment gas become much more uh, money making the multiple additions and microtransactions? But they're 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 making that money back, right? They raise the prices and they're making a bigger percentage because it's digital. People don't understand that either. Fallout 4 next gen update, April 25th. You know, uh Juice had said something yesterday. I watched the video. He said they're gonna announce something. Did they just announce that today? Did they just announce that, Krebsy? He said they're going to announce something today about Fallout 4. Hold on one second. We played, we played Helldivers last night. We played Helldivers last night. Tonight's the podcast. Um, I might check it out afterwards, but I won't stream. Or maybe I'll play it this weekend. All right, let me get to, let me get to this because it's 12 o'clock. Let me get to what, what Star Wars Outlaws is. Okay, let's, let's talk about this, right? We'll go, we'll go over this. All right, so this is from the Game Informer. Okay, Star Wars Outlaws, exclusive hands-on impression uh, by Brian Shea. Okay, as one of the main components of the trip out to uh, Sweden, the issue covers story. We are the first that we get the hands-on Star Wars Outlaws and highly anticipated open-world action game, Massive Entertainment, and the studio behind The Division and last year's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Taking place with Star Wars episode... Taking place between Star Wars Episode Five and Empire Strikes Back and Empire... Uh, and uh, episode six, Return of the Jedi, Outlaws puts you in the shoes of KVS and a common pickpocketing uh, turned thief who gets in over her head and becomes a player in the thriving underworld during the dark period of Star Wars timeline. Here's the thing I don't understand: this this would have been a home run, and I, I never understood. And again, this is nothing against Outlaws itself; it's about Disney and Star Wars, and I don't understand. Maybe they just can't use. Lucas's like stuff at all but wouldn't this have been a lot better if this game was created and instead of KVS you have Han Solo and instead of her robot you have Chewbacca and this movie took place or this game took place before Han became part of the rebellion you know what I mean like that game to me would have been a much bigger seller because people would have loved to know what you know what he did before he was part of the rebellion Missed opportunity, in my opinion. Okay. Star Wars Outlaws features several planets and moons for players to explore, including iconic and well-known locals like Tatooine. Now, but but my hands-on demo take place entirely on uh, Tashar, 
Okay, a new moon created by massive entertainment collaboration with Lucas Games. Given the timeline placement of Star Wars Outlaws, the Empire persists of immediately felt consistently present after landing on the following planet. Unfortunate turns, uh, turn of events, K heads on to the moon of capital city of uh, Morogana. Okay. While the dense moon multi-leveled, but it was also intentionally designed to be a sprawling city like it was in the open world games. If you open up the map and the locations that you built for, for this place is quite compact. Creative director uh, Julian says that what we wanted to do is have something that was very dense in activities rather than super expansive where you get lost. And there's also not much to do. It's very, very focused on providing a dense, busy city experience, which I think is cool. Like if it's a smaller map, but like really like depth in height and whatnot, that could be interesting, especially since I said this in um, th think about because it's massive because they worked on Division two and they have the the summit. Right. The summit is just a building. But imagine just in this particular scenario, they make the summit where it's much more sprawling out. You know, maybe it's, um, you know, two by two instead of the 16 by 16. Maybe it's just bigger, but yet it's stacked on top of each other and different things. That's pretty interesting to me if they have a dense city like uh, Coruscant, you know, like they were going to do with 1313 back in the day. Following the encounter of the stormtroopers, it's also the entrance of Kay's flashes a fake identification and allow and she's allowed through. In this exchange, it reminded of the state of the galaxy is space between two classic films, making their way. Uh, Kay ignores the beckoning shopkeepers, arcade games, betting areas, and table hostings in an inverse card game sabak to find the actual in the cantina. Each city you visit, the cantina is always a central location for getting the lay of the land, gathering intel, finding work. I think this is pretty cool putting you into that spot where you go into the bars, talk to different people, take the quest, the quest givers inside of each city. I've always said, like, if you're going to put a bar, you're going to make something in the game, give it some purpose, right? So I kind of like the way they're doing this, right? Uh, it's primarily the uh, the Pike in, in Enclave, despite being a home of other syndicates as well. To gain some ground with the Pike syndicate, uh, Kay wants to speak to the leader, and sadly, it's a private VIP section of the cantina, so Kay needs to find a back door. Luckily, uh, her hairpin and data spike is also lockpick a side door using the rhythm-based minigame. They have like a little minigame activity that you can do, sort of like the lockpick system in like Starfield or whatnot. After entering the back room of the canteen, I see a blue icon in the distance. These icons demonstrate that Kay and send her companion Nyx to the interact with it. And in the case, it fetches the items, bringing it back, and Nyx is a, is a basically a helper, right? It's a companion. It's a new species created in collaboration with Lucasfilm Games. Okay, uh, describing him as having two sides, Nyx is very cute and friendly, but also extremely pro uh, proactive or productive, as Kay even uses the point of aggression, so he can help you in, like, attack stuff as well. I always like that with, like, in uh, Fallout, with dog meat and stuff like that. You can use him to, to help uh, fight people and also help you with stuff. So Kay reaches uh, the suite, immediately picking up the Pike Syndicate leader as an intruder. Kay gets a chance to FaceTime, but after making a joke and lands him uh, with a thud, and then the name dropping uh, the wrong person. Now the guards toss her out, so much making the, the uh, headway with the Pike Syndicate. Now Kay does toss herself off. Nyx reveals his stolen stolen the ring during the scuffle, and the voice tells her that it might be unwise to move given the Pike's power. Now the voice comes in from da Danka, okay, who's a broker, and she gives Kay the rundown of the syndicates operating through uh, through the planet, offers the job from the unknown client, and the job steal a file from the heavily guarded Pike stronghold. In this mission, the surface is of one of the defining elements of Star Wars Outlaws, your reputation system, which I think is cool, right? So we have a reputation system, and you, the way they described it, the more you do for that faction, the more reputation you go up, but the more you do with that faction, the lower it goes for the other factions, so you get into like these different predicaments. Right, so I think as a gamer, it kind of gives you more replayability. Now you could probably play it two ways. You could probably do a whole playthrough with like running with that one syndicate, or you can do a playthrough where you kind of balance through each one, which I've always liked. So there's a little bit of replayability, replayability, sorry, uh, or revalue of playing through the whole story campaign again, perhaps. Okay, so job of the hut leader of the hut cartel stands out in the most recognizable underworld boss K crosses paths with. It also deals with Lady uh, uh, Kira, or Kira, which is played by, what's her name from Game of Thrones? Emma, what was her name? 
I forget her name. Who many of the, oh, Amelia Clark? There you go. It's in the actual thing. Amelia Clark portrayal in Sto- in Solo Star Wars story. Now the Crimson Dawn is also uh, a new syndicate created of, of Outlaws itself. Now the reputation system represents the standing with these four syndicates, ranging from a terrible to excellent for each individual group. Now, the reputation with each syndicate determined on how the criminal organization treats you. Having good reputation means that you might let walk freely in the hideouts and offer special stock and, and discounts in the shops in their territories. This was happening in uh, in Starfield as well. Certain reputations go up and stuff like that. They would let you walk around. Like I was with part of the Crimson Fleet inside Starfield. So every time I went into a, a space station or something, they would never attack me, right? Which kind of made the game a little bit more boring because they were like the only faction that was really you know, really bad. But anyway, same type of stuff like that. So having a good reputation, you can walk freely through the hideouts, offering special stock and discounts at shops in their territories, and even help you out into hairy situations with another syndicate or even the Empire, which I think is pretty cool, right? If you get in good with the job of the Hut clan, the, the Hut cartel, the Hut cartel will protect you from the Empire. That seems pretty fun, right? It says, in my case of introduction of the system starts with the mission stealing from the Pike syndicate. Uh, K is in front of the entrance of the Pike territory, but the organization isn't exactly eager to roll on the red carpet, even though they just met with her boss. Now, since the standing with them is firmly in poor section of the meter, I need to sneak in, loop down the back alley, and climb the ledge and emerge the restricted Pike area, which is cool because now you have a little bit of stealth stealth in the game, right? You're not sneaking around, just walking around and nothing's interacting with you. The world feels alive based on where you are, where you're doing your mission and what syndicate is there. So Star Wars Outlaws strives to provide player agency, but also early uh, portions of the hideout, uh, you need to be stealthy, as such as Kay's blaster is off limits until she's in the gets deeper into the territory. However, uh, you can also perform stealthy takedowns to clear the path to get to the destination. This is where Nyx really comes in handy as you guide them through the shadows and either dist- distract, attack the guards, or instance, I go slightly louder route and have Nyx run up the guard's leg, latch onto his head, and then have a wait a bit louder, but it also means that I have K sprint up, take the guard out without being de- uh, detected. So that's pretty cool. You can be as smooth and quiet as you want, or you can be as loud and obnoxious as you want, right? So again, choice by the player, which I think is pretty cool. After taking out, sneaking past a few guards, I find a door, and K then lock picks it after completing the rhythm uh, mini game. K finds herself and it appears in the maintenance room. And using Nick's sense, K then spots the electrical circuits on the wall which then tells you to use the button to press to call the elevator that needs to reach the next area. Sadly, the first elevator doesn't raise high enough, and you and the second elevator button is out of reach of K, but not for Nyx. So by directing Nyx to press the button, uh, K then lowers the second elevator, creating a makeshift staircase to climb out to the graded. So there's puzzles, right? So puzzles using Nyx as your as your your link or your extension of of getting to certain places. Continuing to this validation uh, ventilation shaft, rolling implies that K's path, but also telling Nyx to pull down the shutter. Uh, K then blasts power supply to get past uh, the fun, or get past the fan, sorry. Uh, use K's grapple hook, so she's got some extra gear that she can do to swing across the gap, and also reaches the area with a file. Unfortunately, it's protected by an energy shield with two generators. Even worse, the area is heavily guarded, and since it's entered a fully hostile territory, I'm able to choose my approach to generate uh, to the generators. Do I continue stealthy approach or do I tell K, uh, K to blast her her way out of the holster and go guns blazing? I said I decided to go try the path of least resistance and continue operating the shadows. But again, that's pretty cool that you get to decide if you want to go in loud or if you want to be stealthy. I take out a few enemies using the combination of Nick's distraction and the su- and the and the stun setting on K's blaster, but it also doesn't take long for the guard to spot me. And the shootout begins. Unfortunately, I did not think about disable the alarm system, so it triggered. Even after I had taken down the alarm system, it wouldn't have made a difference. I accidentally walked past a slightly of security camera. So that's cool. So there's different like security cameras that can see you. So you you can't just run through a hallway. You got to take your time. Okay. It says, I dig in. I try my best to keep the pikes at bay. And as I take out more and more pikes, stronger enemy types emerge in the shields and more advanced weaponry. Thankfully, I have a healing item and I fall on enemies, drop better weapons. And K's blaster is then used for until the run uh, out of ammo. Now, since I triggered the alarm... My reputation with the Pikes drops. I had made it through without being spotted, but my reputation with them is uh, is not have taken a hit. Sadly, that's not how uh, this played out. So the bodies are piling up. The enemies are closing in on my location, increasing intensity. A risk of explo- uh, exposing myself and doing something r- rash. I make a break for it. Uh, breaking the line of sight and the guards. So I'm assuming it's sort of like Grand Theft Auto. 
right? Or even Starfield, where you know, out of sight, they kind of calm down. They don't, they like look for you. If they can't find you, they're like, oh, okay, nothing happens. They probably walk away. A blue silhouette shows my last loan location for the first place and also looks before fanning out and trying to find me. I use a temporary de escalation to make the break for it in generators. After quickly taking down the guards stationary by them, I deactivate both generators and go retrieve what I came for. Okay. K then accesses terminal and then easily finds a file mystery, uh, mysterious client wanted, but it also finds something even juicier video footage of the underling plotting against him. After the, uh, the opportunes of K knows that now she can blackmail basically. Pretty Penny have misinformation about them. That's right. Even after the violence I just took, part of the pikes, my face on camera, and eventually the K is still considered going for the leader. That's because it's somewhat of an understanding of the criminal underworld that these relationships aren't about making friends, they're about mutual benefits. It says, it seems like K is on is on set giving the the current favor, but also returning to the uh, the cantina with the file for the client. She spots another opportunity to turn out the anonymous client was a member of the Crimson Dawn, which then files retrieve also tested out to see the syndicate would also rely on K for more information about the important jobs. So that's pretty cool, right? So now you can blackmail other ones, getting good with the other syndicate based on the information that you find. That sounds pretty fun. So with the foot now in the door, K then thinks fast, wondering if she should give the extra file regarding the Pike Syndicate to the Crimson Dawn instead of the moment of the player of the choice. This was happening in Starfield as well, right? You, you, you did a mission, you had certain things, you can give it to one person or you can give it to the other, right? That The one, one mission that we did with the, with the mind control and stuff was pretty interesting as well, right? So they're doing the same thing in here. Uh, the opt-in to give the Crimson Dawn causing a reputation with them to increase. After taking the optional job with another quest giver, the cantina I returned to Danka and also for more work. She tells me that the particular merchant to retrieve the part of Kay's blaster, sadly, when I arrive, I learn it doesn't have it. But he's also probably steal a part from a nearby syndicate player agency and reputation system again pop up on my playthrough. And as I can choose if I want to steal it from the Pike Syndicate or the Crimson Dawn, but both of them have the present uh, the presence, okay, on that, on that area to better reputation for Crimson Dawn to let me walk right without resistance. Now, however, with the uh, my decent reputation with this, he says, my reputation isn't good enough to get into the guard's heart of Crimson Dawn territory, so it's back to the stealth me mechanics like it was earlier. So I think that's a pretty cool mechanic. So in the beginning, you can go in guns blazing or stealth, but if you take the stealth approach, it's almost like um, your early on game is going to feel really grindy, because you kind of got to slow down, take your slow your roll down, sneak through everything, or guns blazing your reputation's nothing. But once you build up a reputation with one of these syndicates, then you can start going to take certain missions that'll be a cakewalk for you because you just like kind of walk through. But if you go for the the bad route, if you go for the guns blazing and all your reputations are just shitty, basically you're going to be guns blazing on every single mission, which I think could be pretty interesting. Okay. It says, before wrapping up the demo, I get a brief chance to explore the open world outside, and with the press of a button, I summon a speeder with a massive design with an inspiration from a Swedish motorbike manufacturer, and the vehicle feels excellent, action, smooth, quick, and agile like a speeder should. After some brief navigations includes hearing radio chatter for some activities I could pers uh, pursue, I arrive in a small town and hope that this is a current location case ship of his trailblazer. It says, I need to go to a nearby building and grab it, uh, grab an item from... Uh, from it from a blue door is locked after a quick modification case blaster her weapon gains an ion blast ability which gives her the advantage over droid enemies to allow them to solve environmental puzzles like this one Kate can access the building and loot the goodies in the shooting from two transformers for the lock which is also the ion blast unfortunately just as i was starting to get true feeling of the gameplay loop in star wars outlaws my session ended I didn't have the opportunity to explore reputation system truly, but I also love the no notion that keeping the appearance with the various syndicates, not to mention making sure it's not annoyed of the empires too much. Now, after spending the afternoon taking uh, taking in the sights and sounds of, of the of the planet, I'm aware of ex um, I came aw away excited about the far manipulation of various systems to play in Star Wars Outlaws. Massive Entertainment came into the project wanting to create an ultimate scoundrel experience set in the Star Wars galaxy from what we've seen and played, and a lot of important elements play accomplishment of the goal. Uh, more excited than ever uh, to get my hands on the final product when it comes to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S, PC on August 30th. So, the hands-on the hands on preview sounds pretty good. I'll be honest. I'm intrigued by this because I actually said this, what, over a year ago during last year's Summer Game Fest when we first saw it. I said that this is going to be my Starfield. 
I was I was excited for Starfield, but I was more excited about this game because obviously we talk about IPs and how people get excited about certain IPs. And I was excited for Outlaws because Outlaws to me is that Red Dead Redemption, is that Hogwarts legacy. If you if you are a Western fan, Red Dead's your your game. If you are a Hogwarts or Harry Potter fan, Hogwarts is your game. There hasn't been a Star Wars game sort of like this, minus an MMO, where you really open world. There's never been an open world game like this, single player, where you get to go around and be that character, like a character in Hogwarts or like a character Arthur Morgan uh, in in Red Dead Redemption. So I'm really excited about Star Wars over Starfield because even the 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 spaceship combat that looked pretty good in the in the trailer that we saw over a year ago. The vast open worlds that you can go in. That I think there's five planets that you can go into. Now, I don't know if the DLC that comes in down the line, if it brings in more locations, if it's just more missions and more stuff in the locations that are already in the game. I don't know. I'm really excited about the game, but I'm really disappointed in what Ubisoft, the structuring that they've done with the game. I've already said this yesterday. I'll say it again today. I'm going to go with the $18 model to get the base game. And if I like the game and it really just blows me away, then obviously... I'll purchase it um, so I can play it after a month because in, I'm not going to keep paying $18 a month to play that one game on Ubisoft Plus. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you think about this, uh, the Outlaws? Seeing this, we, we did a poll yesterday on our channel, right? So let me let me bring this up real fast. I asked people after they saw the pricing point if they were excited about, about Outlaws. And surprisingly, we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of votes, right? We have, I think, about 100 votes. Yeah, we have 146 votes. 146 votes. And right now, 20% of the people say yes, pre-order, right? 20% of the 146 people wanted to pre-order, not interested. No, not interested. 21% are not interested at all, okay? 7% are yes, yes. So 27% are yes day one or yes pre-order. 21% is not interested in the game at all. And then there's 53% of the people uh, out of the 146 people that are, that voted for us that are just kind of lost right now. They're like, I don't know. And that could be anything of the, I need to know more about the game. Um, maybe the price is out of range. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of stuff that they're not sure about. So 53% of the people could all go no. 53% of the people could all say yes. But I find it interesting that a lot of people just don't know what it is. Now, again, there's a lot going on right now. Talk about the Star Wars Outlaws. And one has to go with people just don't like Disney right now. People don't like Star Wars right now. They're just not interested in Star Wars. They don't like anything that's happening with Star Wars. Uh, three, they don't like what the character looks like. They think that video games is ruining video games of the of the characters, which is happening. I'm not going to say that that's what's happening here, but they don't make women look like women. They make them kind of look more masculine and whatnot. So that 53% of people that don't know if they maybe later down the line, I think that's a everything that's going on right it's the it's the price model it's the drama going on it's the character model going on it's it's just the whole feel of what's happening in the gaming industry right now but these are just my thoughts let me know yours in the comment section down below what do you think about star wars outlaws is this a game that you're really interested in picking up after you heard the game informer uh with the with the stealth and the different materials and also the the skill tree they talked about that yesterday uh yesterday or two days ago talking about their you raise your blaster up and your different specs on your character let me know in the comment section down below please make sure you share like and subscribe and if you like what i do here please make sure you check out some of our other videos thanks for watching <clears throat>《是《Dog Meat and Fallout 3》Game of the Year can actually take down Deathclaw. Yo, I love Dog Meat. Dog Meat was great, Chris. There was a time, uh, there was a time I played Fallout, and I was out somewhere, and my dog left. Oh no, he died. That's what it was. He died, and then I didn't know where he was. And I shit you not, I played this game so much, and I went everywhere and everywhere, but I never went back to my home. I was just exploring. I was calling him, was looking at places where I went, maybe where I was, but I just couldn't find him. Six months. Six months. And I'm not talking about six months in game. I'm talking about six months in real life playing Fallout 3. All of a sudden, he just ran up to me one day and I was like, oh my God. And I was so excited for a virtual dog in a video game, but I was just like, man, 
I love this companion. And I wanted more. I wanted. Uh, what was another game we had that had a the, you had a dog? Was it Fable? Was it Fable? What game was it? I like dog companions. Is basically what I'm saying. I wonder if the character looks like her. She's pretty famous, right? Well, the color is impressed. Color me impressed. I thought it would be a one-off game. It seems like it's more of a just a just the story. Yeah, no, it's it's it's. I'm telling you, it's like a Red Dead Redemption. It's like a Hogwarts Legacy where you can like kind of go and do what you want. By the way, B says Midnight Suns is not a good game. Sorry, folks. Water says if done right, it could be game of the year. We shall see. I'm not the biggest fan of myself, but it's also a worse fire uh, emblem to me. For oh, you're talking about you're talking to B Eclipse. Super mutant com uh, companion. I used to use him, but dog me, I just love the best. You just gave the Gatlin gun. You gave the Gatlin gun to the mutant, and it was over. He just killed everything. It sounds like a stealth simulator, but I like to go bam bam. You can though, salty. You can. You don't have to go stealth. You could go bam bam. Jason says hard pass for me. Uba slop are scum. Uh, Clip says I'll pay eighteen dollars a month to play it. And then I'll wait until the DLCs are out and then get it for cheap as shit. And then I'll want to the DLC. The problem with that is if it's only digital, I wonder how fast it will go on sale because they can control the price there. You know, a lot of people have checked out of Star Wars. Asma says no lightsabers, no deal. The Eclipse trailer. I, I watched his thing, Salty, and he's not wrong. Like, why not make a Han Solo game? Why make this? You know, what's going on, RPG? Hellblade, 964, 30 frames per second thoughts. I don't have any thoughts. I, I, I didn't play the first one, so it's not a game that I'm interested in at all. I, I do think it's uh, bullshit. We, we did talk about this uh, a couple earlier this week with the uh, I made a video of it. The fact that the Xbox Series X doesn't have an option to go bigger is my biggest complaint about for people that like Hellblade. But other than that, I don't have anything. I hope my saves and trophies will transfer over to PlayStation 5 or Fallout 4. You know why, Mike? No, I don't. What? Yeah, to this game, like Jones, let, let's be honest. Nobody cares about a game that people are not Jedi. But if you're Han Solo and you got to control Han Solo and Chewie, like just think about what we're talking about here, right? Han Solo and Chewie video game would have been cool if it was like a co-op game where you play the game solo. Solo, huh? So it would have been it would have been a fantastic game, like leading up to. Sort of like what Rogue One did, where it leads right into Empire Strikes Back. It would have been really cool if you did, like, the story of Han Solo and Chewbacca, and he ends up at the end of the game, like, in the cantina just moments before the interaction with him and Greedo. You know what I mean? That would have been cool. I would have taken that. Like, the, the movie, or the game ends with you walking to the cantina and sitting in the corner, and Greedo walks up to you. And then you see in the background, Luke and Obi-Wan coming to the door. And then wraps up. The rest is history. Right? That would have been cool. But they don't want to do that. You could have you could have done a whole bunch of story. You could have went on the missions with him and Hondo. You know what I mean? Like, you could have done a whole bunch of stuff. It takes place between Solo and 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 New, and New Hope.
Battlefield 3, Battlefront 3 would have been... Uh, I still think they're working on a Battlefront 3. You don't have to get Harrison to, to voice. No, you could use... You could use... What's his name? Adrian? You could use the guy that, from Solo. You could also... Uh, Lucas Lucasfilm owns the right to Harrison Ford's voice and likeness. So... I mean, they got Troy Baker to, to sound like him in Indiana Drones. There's there's people that do sound like him. A Han Solo single-player game would have been... Would, the fact that Disney is sitting on this billion-dollar, like, franchise. You, you can make a Sith game. You can make a standalone Han Solo game. You can continue a Luke Skywalker after Return of the Jedi, his adventures... Right? You want to make a live service game? Make a Jedi game with Luke Skywalker. Okay? Adventures of Luke and R2. As they go on these adventures, as he's trying to build the the academy. Right? You could have filled in the gap. You could do so many different things. They're like, no, we're going to make a story of a guy we don't give a shit about. And he's out in the dark, uh, dark outsides of the... No one, no one cares about that. Star Wars is Luke Skywalker. Star Wars is Han Solo. Star Wars is Princess Leia. Hell... I would take a Princess Leia game, okay? Like, there's so many things they could have done. Darth Maul, Darth Vader, fucking, I don't, I don't care. But they're like, no, 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 you can't, you can't do the, the normal stuff for Star Wars. We got to make our new modern day audience of people that don't give a shit about them. So stupid. And again, this is not giving shit to KVS and and it's giving shit to the company. It's giving shit to Lucas. It's giving shit to Disney. Like they're they're just missing so many different things. Layoff flipping activity. From playing Han and Chewie, you get to fly the Falcon. Yeah, I mean, it just... I just, I just don't get it. But like, no, no, we gotta make a new vehicle. Trailblazer. It's a trailblazer. The reason people are tired of Star Wars, they're tired of Disney Star Wars. They're not tired of Star Wars. They're not tired... Where where Where's the Bounty Hunter game? Where is the Boba Fett game, right? They had it in the past. It was a, it was a fun game. Right? You could have made that. Now they're making a Mando game, but they, they canceled the Mando game. Is it coming out the Mando game? I don't know. Right? But there's so many characters you could have done. You could make the Clone Wars game. There, there's so many things. Oh, I said that. I said that, Dolphin. On PC, if they can, someone will mod this, and KVS will be Han Solo, and the robot will be Chewy. For 100%. Not only, not only will they take, they'll take the models or something from like, uh, from one engine and move it over to the other. They'll do something. People are much more talented than, than anybody else gives credit for. Well, that Ray game's coming. The video games to me is the best. Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, great storytelling, great gameplay, just a good good series. Now, the optimization stuff, not very good for Survivor, but the game itself has been a very, that series is very good. Looking forward to the third one, okay, even if they ruin it, it so far so good for two. Um, and I think this game is going to be a good game. I, I do. I think this game is going to be a great game. I don't care it's a girl uh, lead protagonist. I'm okay learning about this character as well and like being part of the Star Wars universe. I just feel like it's a missed opportunity that you that you literally have Han Solo in this universe. And obviously he's frozen because it takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. But you could have taken the same exact thing and just moved it earlier. And I think it would have people would have been like, oh, this is amazing.
<clears throat> I've been tired of Disney Star Wars for a good long time. More excited for the video games inside Star Wars. Darth Ray. You also make the girl naked and everyone will stop bitching. She's ugly. <laughs> there are there are moments in the trailer. There are moments in that trailer. I watched it a couple of times yesterday, Dolphin, that she looks completely different in one scene to the next. Like one um one she almost looks I know it's a video game, but she almost looks like a like a puppet or she almost looks like a like I don't know, like a husk of the character. Like I don't know if they rendered it correctly or something. It was like completely and utterly different than from one scene to the next. Let me see if I can find it real fast. Let me let me let me see if I can I, I can find the like look look at that look at that face right there. Looks terrible. That face looks absolutely horrendous right there. Right? Like you see her face there. Not bad. That that looks fine, right? That one doesn't look as good. Oh, this is the this is the best right here. This is a little jab towards them, right? They they sent the best bounty hunter in the galaxy after her. Who? Who's this? <laughs> Out of all the bounty hunters that are the best, first of all, the best in in the is um is what's his name? Cad Bane. Okay, then Boba Fett. Boba Fett's not in the Sarlacc pick at this moment, right? We got to send... How cool would it have been if they put Boba Fett to hunt you down? Right? Suicide Squad, when Batman comes and hunts you down, you're a little terrified. It would have been pretty cool if Boba Fett was hunting you down in this game. Yeah, and, and on, top, on top of this, right? The, the best bounty hunter in the galaxy... She doesn't even look cool. She doesn't look like a bounty hunter at all. She doesn't look like a bounty hunter at all. But I bet... I bet that the actress that played this character had to have her face shown. Right? Like, like this part right here, this part's bad. This is where she looks like a Muppet. There, there's so I don't I don't see I don't see Boba Fett in this scene. It's like Guido back there. Right, and then you're putting a band together, right? You're 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 putting a a Ocean's Eleven team together for your biggest heist uh, of your of your job, which is interesting. Best bounty hunter in the galaxy.
<clears throat> Star Wars story, Galactic uh, sta Stakes in Place, all about her freedom. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about the world, exploring the world. Like, it's like something always does something great, but then they miss something. It would have been cool to create your own character, right? Like a Mass Effect type of thing instead of this character, but it is what it is. More like the uh, the best load of bullshit I've ever heard in a long time. The best, the best, the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. All right. I am done for the day. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow well, for the morning. I'll be back tonight as long as my computer boots up. And uh, me and Sarge will be doing Generation X Gaming, the weekly podcast that goes over a few of the top stories from the past week, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, episode 391. If you like it, make sure you come on by. It's a good time. We just rant along the way as we tell, uh, talk about news stories and whatnot. Um, and then uh, I'm done for the week. You'll see uploads and stuff happen throughout the weekend. And then we'll be back on Monday morning, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, to talk about more gaming news. I appreciate it very much. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to go above and beyond that, become a member as little as $5. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for chatting. Peace.